This is one of the most mind-boggling Korean mystery films. Some viewers have watched it 10 times and still couldn't comprehend the story. The director skillfully employs montage and unexpected plot twists that leave audiences astonished. The story takes place in a small village in Korea. A man accidentally falls from a mountain while hunting and, upon waking up, witnesses a bizarre scene. He sees a Japanese man crouching on the ground, feasting on the corpse of an animal. Terrified, the man hides behind a rock. But the Japanese man discovers his location and approaches him with glowing eyes, resembling a monster. After this incident, strange occurrences start happening in the village. A couple is brutally murdered, their bodies stabbed over 20 times, and the crime scene is horrifying. The killer, covered in pustules with white eyes, sits silently at the door, as if possessed. Chang Gu, the male lead, accidentally saw a bunch of wilted goldfish grass at the scene, and this sets up a big plot for the later episodes. Soon after, another woman covered in sores goes mad and sets her entire family on fire. The next morning the mad woman hanged herself from a crooked tree. Zhang Gu and Sun Bok are guarding the crime scene when a girl throws stones at them. Initially, they ignore her. But when Sun Bok leaves, the girl approaches Zhang Gu directly. Pay attention to the blue jacket she is wearing. As it becomes an important plot point later, the girl leads Zhang Gu to the crime scene and vividly describes how the deranged woman killed her family. The girl tells Zhang Gu that the Japanese man in the mountain is a monster, and that everything that's happened in the village recently is his doing. Alarmed, Zhang Gu calls Sun Bok to tell him about the witness. However, when he returns to the house, the girl has vanished. While searching, Zhang Gu opens the back door and finds a shirtless man gnawing on raw meat. To his horror, the man turns out to be the Japanese man from the village. Zhang Gu runs in terror but falls to the ground as the Japanese man with blood-stained face chases him, his eyes wild. Suddenly, Zhang Gu wakes up from his bed. It was all a dream. However, this dream drastically changes Zhang Gu's life. His daughter falls seriously ill with a high fever, and the house experiences strange noises. To uncover the truth, Zhang Gu seeks out the man who was hunting on the mountain before. With the man's guidance, they plan to go to the Japanese man's house. On the way, they pass by the place where the Japanese man was eating the animal's corpse, and the sight of bones scattered on the ground terrifies the man. Who wants to turn back? Zhang Gu insists on continuing, and as they argue, the man slips and falls into the mud. The man stood up and took two steps before he was struck by lightning again. Zhang Gu and Sun Bok had no choice but to take the man to the hospital. Zhang Gu saw the murderer's body covered in pus, and the doctors around him couldn't do anything about it. In a short while, the man died in the hospital in an extremely strange position. Zhang Gu at the door stared in horror. After work, Zhang Gu and Sun Bok go to a barbecue restaurant to calm their nerves with some drinks. There, Zhang Gu notices a woman with pustules on her neck wearing a red sweater, and the woman's red sweater will also be a foreshadowing. Upon arriving home, Zhang Gu finds his daughter convulsing as if possessed, and she keeps saying that a woman wants to enter her room. Zhang Gu embraces his daughter tightly, trying to comfort her. The next morning, to their surprise, his daughter's appetite has improved significantly. She eats a whole plate of fish. Even though she never liked fish before, Zhang Gu's mother suspects that she might be possessed and suggests inviting a shaman for a ritual. But Zhang Gu doesn't believe in such things. Instead, Zhang Gu seeks out Sun Bok, and together they plan to go to the Japanese man's house. They also bring along Sun Bok's nephew, Isam, who used to study in Japan and can act as their translator. Upon arriving at the Japanese man's place, they find he is not at home. They secretly search the room and find a white mask in a box. In the adjacent room, Zhang Gu discovers an altar. Meanwhile, Sun Bok finds a hidden room covered with photos of all the deceased villagers, including a shoe belonging to Zhang Gu's daughter. Suddenly, the Japanese man returns, and the three are petrified in silence as he looks at them sternly. They hurriedly leave in their car. In the car, Sun Bok is like a lost soul. He tells Zhang Gu that Japanese man must be the murderer and takes out Zhang Gu's daughter's shoe. Back at home, Zhang Gu asks his daughter if she has seen the Japanese man. But she not only refuses to tell him but also starts screaming at him. That night, when his daughter is asleep, Zhang Gu secretly reads her diary. He finds horrifying doodles and notices fresh pustules on her legs. Realizing the severity of the situation, Zhang Gu understands that he must act quickly to stop the unfolding events, or his daughter might end up dying mysteriously like the others. The next day, Zhang Gu returns to the Japanese man's house with Isam, but the photos on the walls are gone. Enraged, Zhang Gu kills the Japanese man's black dog and warns him to leave within three days, 
or face the same fate as the dog. The Japanese man remains silent and unfazed. In the evening, the Japanese man sat alone in front of his door while the crows nod on the body of his dog. The Japanese stayed like this until late at night. The next morning, John Gu's house is adorned with a dead goat hanging at the door, and John Gu suddenly suffers a stroke and cannot stand up. After receiving treatment at the clinic, he regains consciousness. When John Gu wakes up, he asks his mother where his daughter is. His mother tells him that the neighbor's grandmother is looking after her. Realizing the danger, John Gu immediately gets up from the hospital bed. Knowing his daughter's situation is perilous, they rush to the neighbor's house. And as soon as they enter, they find the neighbor's grandmother lying in a pool of blood, while his daughter sits on the floor holding a fruit knife. Looking terrified, John Gu thinks it must be Japanese man's voodoo. So, he decided to call upon an exorcist named I.L. Guang for help. After inspecting John Gu's yard, I.L. Guang found a dead crow in a basin. He then lit a fire and performed a simple ritual in front of John Gu's daughter, who seemed to be in immense pain and kept howling during the ceremony. After the ritual, I.L. Guang asked John Gu if he had offended anyone. John Gu mentioned Japanese man, and I.L. Guang revealed that Japanese man was not human but a powerful evil spirit, one of the strongest he had encountered. I.L. Guang warned that if Japanese man wasn't stopped, everyone in the village would be killed. I.L. Guang used rice divination and predicted that he would perform the ritual to capture the evil spirit at midnight, but it would cost 10 million Korean won. John Gu, desperate to save his daughter, reluctantly agreed. Meanwhile, another tragedy struck the village as Chun Bei and his family were found dead. With Chun Bei missing, Japanese man discovered a corpse on a truck, and the name on the clothing matched Chun Bei's. Japanese man then went to the bazaar and bought some black chickens, and then practiced his kung fu for a while under the waterfalls again. When night fell, Japanese man set up an altar in his house and put a picture of Chun Bei in front of it. At the same time, I.L. Guang also opened the altar at John Gu's house. Both of them are waiting for the hour to come as if they are preparing to fight each other. As time passes by, both sides started their own rituals. I.L. Guang holds a fan and performs the ritual. Japanese man drumming and reciting incantations. John Gu's daughter is getting more and more crazy as the ritual progresses. I.L. Guang kept nailing the wooden stake, and John Gu's daughter's body was racked with piercing pain. Japanese man appeared to be hurt and collapsed during the ritual. However, John Gu couldn't bear to see his daughter suffer and rushed to disrupt I.L. Guang's ceremony. Putting an end to the proceedings, this gave Japanese man a moment to catch his breath, but he saw a white-robed woman before him. The next morning, John Gu gathered his friends and armed themselves, determined to find Japanese man and take matters into his own hands. However, they didn't find Japanese man, but met Chun Bei, who had turned into a zombie. Soon they were fighting with Chun Bei with sticks, but it was obvious that Chun Bei had no sense of pain. Just when the group was overwhelmed, Chun Bei suddenly convulsed and died. Meanwhile, John Gu spotted Japanese man observing from the woods. They chased him to a cliff, but Japanese man vanished before they could reach him. John Gu searched the cliffside and didn't find anything. Japanese man is now leaning against the cliff wall, not daring to make a sound, but his hiding place is still discovered by the woman in white. John Gu and his companions, unable to find Japanese man, decided to head back home. However, a body suddenly fell from the mountain. To their astonishment, it was Japanese man, lifeless and without breath. They disposed of his body by tossing it down the mountain, and the woman in white has been watching all this from the mountain. I.L. Guang performed a divination and glanced toward the distant mountain, uttering some words. <laughs> John Gu returned to his house and found his daughter's condition had miraculously improved, believing the ordeal might finally be over, but unbeknownst to him, a greater danger still lurked. That night, I.L. Guang arrived at John Gu's house, but as soon as he stepped out of the car, he started inexplicably bleeding from his nose. It was the white-clad woman who had come from John Gu's home and spoke only one word, causing I.L. Guang to be overwhelmed by her powerful presence and vomiting uncontrollably. He had no choice but to leave in a disheartened manner. Back at his own place, I.L. Guang realized he was no match for the white-clad woman. He hastily packed his belongings, preparing to escape during the night. However, 
A swarm of moths appeared and obstructed his vision, observing the situation. He seemed to understand something and drove back to the village. On the way, Ai Guang called and told John Gu that he had miscalculated before. Japanese man was not a demon, he was trying to save the village. They had killed the wrong person, and the true evil was the white-clad woman. Ai Guang told John Gu to hurry home to see his daughter. Sure enough, when John Gu returned home, he discovered his daughter was missing, panicking. He searched the village for her. On a small path, John Gu encountered the white-clad woman. John Gu asks the woman where his daughter is. The woman in white told John Gu that his daughter had returned home. She also claimed that Japanese man was a demon who sought to devour the villagers. However, John Gu chose to ignore her and head back home. The woman then warned him loudly that if he returned, his family would die. She revealed that she had set a trap at his house. And when the rooster crowed three times, the demon would be captured. Just when John Gu was convinced, Ai Guang calls again and tells John Gu not to believe the woman in white. By now, the rooster had crowed twice. John Gu's heart was conflicted and he didn't know who to believe. The woman grabbed John Gu's clothes. John Gu also saw the woman's hairpin behind her, which belonged to his daughter. And the clothes the woman was wearing were exactly the same as the clothes of the people who died before. John Gu decides that the woman is the real evil spirit and runs straight to the house despite the obstacles. And the woman behind him instantly breaks down and screams. When John Gu entered the yard, the goldfish grass hanging in the doorway wilted instantly. The scene in the room made John Gu completely collapse. His wife and mother were lying in a pool of blood, and his daughter was standing there with a fruit knife covered in blood. On the other hand, Lee San's family was brutally murdered, and his policeman uncle sat on the ground covered in pus, thinking that Japanese man might still be alive. Isam drove alone to the place where the body was dumped. In a cave, Isam indeed found Japanese man, wounded but alive. However, before he could question him, the old man took a camera and began snapping pictures. While filming, Japanese man finally revealed his true colors, and it turned out that he was the real devil. In the early hours of the morning Ai Guang came to John Gu's house he took pictures of the family's death with his camera. As he prepared to leave, he accidentally knocked over a box filled with pictures, which turned out to be the missing photographs from Japanese man's secret room. And with that, the movie concludes. The intricately woven plot has left us perplexed, and there are still unanswered questions. First of all let's talk about Japanese man he is indeed a monster and all the people killed in the village were done by him. The film doesn't explain why he did it. Il Guang and Japanese man were in cahoots, one seemingly for monetary gain, and the other conducting dark rituals in secret. Their respective ceremonies were not confrontations but rather separate events. Il Guang performed the ritual targeting Zhang Gu's daughter, while Japanese man targeted Chunbei's corpse. The reason Japanese man was injured was due to the white-clad woman's interference, disrupting his ritual. Remember the phrase Il Guang used? The fish took the bait? He might have sensed the presence of the white-clad woman during the ritual, thus using her to eliminate Japanese man. However, he never anticipated her immense power. With just one word almost killing him, Il Guang's escape was halted by the swarm of moths. A message sent by Japanese man, moths symbolize demons in Japan. After learning that Japanese man was still alive, Il Guang decided to return to the village and continue collaborating with him. The woman in white is indeed a ghost, but she's more like the guardian spirit of the village. The woman wears dead people's clothes because that's the only way the living can see her. Everything she does is to protect everyone in the village. Interested friends can go to see the original film perhaps you will have a different understanding of this film.